Hello everybody, Gigaraptor here with the fourth tutorial in the physics tutorial series and today we'll be covering resolving forces vertically and horizontally from pre-existing resultant resultant forces. So take for example a circle. Nice lovely little circle here. Or an egg or a potato or whatever the hell it looks like. Say we have our force coming out here. At a certain angle, say call it theta. How would we go about I should probably cut that in. So we we call we call it X Newtons. How would we go about resolving which way horizontal and how it would go up vertically, for example? Horizontally, vertically. Perpendicular, parallel. Just reminding myself. How would we go about calculating the horizontal and vertical components of this? So the answer is very simple. As you probably have already guessed, I am drawing a triangle. A right angle triangle to be precise. We can form a triangle with this and X will be the hypotenuse. So in order to calculate from this position our vertical component, what we would do, if you remember, because triangles are divided up into hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent, what we would do is we'd just employ regular trigonometry. So in order to gain our opposite value from hypotenuse, what we would do is we would multiply our hypotenuse by the sine of theta. Theta being this angle here, this crazy looking Greek letter. So this works, this will give us this, this side here. In order to calculate our adjacent, which is this one here, which is adjacent to the angle, we would simply just take h and multiply it by the cosine of theta. Very simple. Unless you're, unless you haven't done GCC math for some reason. Very simple. So let's come up with an example. Say we've got our circle here. We're not going to employ. We're, oops, that, that was a bit of a slip. I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, say, say we've got our we've got our potato here and it's for some reason flying in this direction. I'm not going to bother doing any extra forces or anything applied to it because potatoes have mass in case people have forgotten. Say we have say we have like a it's being thrown in this direction at a magnitude of 75 newtons. Which is just fairly fairly big for a potato. So how would we resolve our vertical and our horizontal? We'd first decide an angle, say 40 degrees. I'm just going to say now, I'd suggest getting out a calculator for this bit. Whether that be on your computer or what. So you can check my calculations and you can confirm it for yourself. So using our previously stated method, to calculate our vertical component, what we do is we do 75 multiplied by the sine of 40. We understand? Good. And for our horizontal, I'll put no equals there so we can calculate here in a second. For our, for our vertical, a vertical? Wait, our horizontal. This is our vertical, this is our horizontal. Just had a brain fart there. I'm going to do multiply by the cosine of 40. So now I'm going to give you about 5 seconds to calculate them. You can pause the video if you like. You better have already calculated those things. I'll come to your house and find you and show you how to do them. So, for this here, 75 multiplied by the sine of 40 is about 48.2 newtons. Oh, four, not 4.8, 48.2 newtons. And then our horizontal will just be the cosine of that. So, we'll get around 57 point five newtons. It's probably worth stating now that if you're doing A-level physics and probably A-level mechanics as well, significant figures are very important so put significant figures. Actually that's occurred to me, I'll do a tutorial on significant figures later on for those who are interested. 
probably is part of the main tutorial. So these are the three significant figures. So we can confirm this by simply doing Pythagoras theorem, which if you don't forget, which if you haven't forgotten, is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Understand? Right. So this would simply be 48.2 squared plus 57.5 squared. And then we're going to square root that. And it gives us an answer remarkably close to 75. It won't be exactly 75 because we've put it to three significant figures. And you can probably see from your calculator display that there's a lot more numbers proceed, like going after this. So now for another example. Say we've got our potato again, or an egg, or whatever you want it to be. It could be a hand egg if you're if you're American, or a rugby ball, or something. Say we've got our force going in this direction. At about this angle. Say this just being straight. If this is straight down, actually, I'm going to get rid of. Get rid of that. Make it nice and neat straight. Say we've got this this force here at say say 30 newtons and we've got an angle of 25 degrees say. This is where things get interesting because then we have to resolve our angle here. Understanding? So we all know that the we all we all should know that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So in order to resolve our angle here, we do 90 plus 25 equals 115, and then just then just subtract 115 from 180, which is around 65 degrees. Just checking my maths. Yes, it is. So. When we're doing like this, it's quite interesting. Like we could, what we could theoretically do is just do the cosine of 25, sine of 25, and that down here. But I don't think that's a good way of doing it. So, in order to resolve, because it keeps cosine and sine like constant. So, if we wanted to resolve our forces down here, we would do, say, 30 multiplied by the cosine of 65. and 30 sine wait 65 not 64 probably should have had coffee before this I hope you can read that because um, I'm having issues reading it I'll probably put 3 there make it more clear so you, I'm going to give you about 5 seconds maybe 10 seconds this time to calculate them so let's do No, yeah, no. Well, actually, sorry, I was going to check these to make sure that would work. But so we're going to do our horizontal first. So we're going to do 30 multiplied by the by the cosine of 65, 65, which is about 12.7 to three SFs. And then we're just going to do this up here. So we're going to just replace that with sine. That's 27.2 to three significant figures. Probably look a seven or one. And then to check that, we're just going to check it the same way again. Plus seven. Seven squared. No. Oops. Um, I done goofed there that calculation. So, because I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not having a good day. So, that's going to work. So, that's going to give you about 901, the addition of those, square root, about 30. So, we could also just leave this B as well, and just swap those around to calculate our funds. So, this could also be 30 sine of 25, or 30 cos of 25, so... Let's calculate that then. So 30 sine, no, 30 cos 25 will give us, yeah, about 27.2. And to get our horizontal, we 
and do sign, which gives us roughly the same answer. Or in fact, it gives us the exact same answer. So what you could theoretically do is, if you're going to use this angle here, 25, you could just swap this and replace it with cosine, and replace this with sine. But you should already know this because you've done GCSE maths. Um, I just realised how ugly the diagram is. So anyway, let's let's do one last example, which follows into our Newton's third law thing. So say we've got our a, bl a brick or something, a cinder block or whatever. And let's say it weighs five kilograms, so five g newtons. Got that? Five g newtons. So about what about? 49.05 and then we've got our other one our other force here with an angle of 50 degrees it doesn't look like 50 degrees but it's bloody 50 degrees because I say it is um, say it's going at 20 newtons shouldn't really be but you know say it's going at 20 newtons how would we resolve R? if you don't know what this is watch the second tutorial so R would equal 5g newtons and we'd add on because our vertical is now our adjacent if we're going to just use this angle we'd add on 20 the cosine of 50 you understand because in our triangle the adjacent line here represents our vertical therefore it must be cosine and since the value of our angle is 50 it must be 50 understand multiply by 20 which is the hypotenuse so let's do let's get out our calculators so first of all we're going to do 5 times 9.81 because that's the easy bit yeah 49.05 like i said and then we're going to add 20 multiplied by the cosine of 50 which gives us 12.86 roughly to 4 SFs because this is to 4 SFs so in order to give us R the magnitude of R anyway we're going to take away, we're going to add these together even 8, 6 so we've got 1 here remainder 1, 9 plus 2 is 11 6, 61.91 so the magnitude of R is 91.91 so we're going to say this is up and down so this can be so you could denote up as a minus or you could denote this as a minus to represent direction but for, a, for all intents and purposes we know that R is applied in the opposite directions along the same lines of action as these forces here so that was the fourth tutorial on uh, revolve, resolving vertical and horizontal and or perpendicular and and parallel forces well parallel well okay I'll categorize them to make it more clear we will do hor horizontal and parallel and vertical and perpendicular because 90 degrees all right hopefully my waffling hasn't been too boring uh, thanks for watching and I will see you later on the next episode where we'll cover the very simple concept of terminal velocity in our atmosphere. Goodbye.